So, it begins. Ukraine started advancing in Kherson and most likely it will be liberated very soon. Or I mean, who knows, Russia might simply goodwill gesture it. But in one way or another, Russia acknowledged itself that it has some very difficult decisions to make. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's go straight to the point and see some footage from around Ukraine. And our first video comes to us from Zhetomir, and as you can see, a big explosion has been recorded on camera. Then we go to Kiev, where reportedly an energy infrastructure object has been under attack. Russians mainly were using drones for this purpose, and as you can see from this video, Ukrainians are trying to bring it down. And then we move to Belgorod, where according to a local there was several shellings next to the local airport. And finally, here is a video from Kharkov, where we can see that Russian missiles are detonating an industrial zone. In the last several days, Russia was specifically targeting the critical infrastructure of Ukraine, and unfortunately, they have been relatively successful. And I will talk about this in more details very soon. But in the meantime, let's go down to the southeast. And while I'm going there, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel if you like this style of daily updating. You can also follow me on Instagram and send me a message and I will reply to you. Our first video comes to us from Donetsk and as you can see right here, these are the consequences of attacks against administrative building of Russian infiltrators. And then we move to Dnipro, where one of the biggest thermal power plant has been shelled by Russians. Like mentioned previously, for the last several days, Russians were specifically targeting the critical infrastructure objects. And according to President Zelensky himself, since October 10th, 30% of Ukraine's power stations have been destroyed. And one of the potential reasons for this, it is because Russia is now launching its missiles from much closer locations, making it more difficult for Ukrainian air defense system to intercept them. And what I mean by that is that Russia used to launch missiles from Caspian and see, and now they do it from Rostov-on-Don region. I also have this incredible 15-minute documentary about the liberation of one Kherson settlement, which is the combination of body cam and drone footage. And if you want to see it for yourself how the first-person liberation looks like, please consider checking my Patreon. The proceeds will be donated to Ukraine, and you can find all the useful links down below. But okay, and now let's talk about the major part of the video, which is the upcoming liberation of Kherson and that Russians are facing to make very difficult decisions. But in order to understand what these difficult decisions can be, you first have to know what happened today and which statements were made. And first of all, even though it is not yet reflected by this map, according to several reports, including the Russian ones, Ukraine resumed its counteroffensive in the north northeast of Kherson region. And right now, a group of Ukrainian forces is advancing rapidly from Dutchani all the way to Milove, which is going to be a huge victory in case Ukraine is successful, because they will be able to cross the first water obstacle. And as soon as they can liberate Milove, it's gonna be only one water obstacle left on their way all the way down to Birislav. And even though Ukraine is not yet close to these cities, no one stops them from destroying military objects from a distance. And what I mean by that is that reportedly Ukrainians were able to destroy four military warehouses in Bereslav region, one military warehouse and one military headquarters in Kachovka region, and then one more military warehouse next to Kherson city. Which is pretty much exactly what you need to do before the counteroffensive. First you target the enemy's supplies in the back and then you advance. And Russia perfectly understands this, that is why the narrative of both the Russian army and the Russian propagandists becomes very pessimistic. They pretty much acknowledge that the battle for Kherson has already started, and some of them even say that the first lines of defense of Russians will be completely crushed. And because of this, the Russian infiltrator in Kherson region, Vladimir Saldo, has announced a 
total evacuation from the right side of Dnipro river. He then also added that according to his intelligence data, the biggest concentration of Ukrainians comes from Krivoy Roh and Mykolaiv sides. And get this, one of the reasons for this evacuation according to him, it is because Ukrainians will be targeting to destroy a dam in Nova Kakhovka. And the purpose of this will be to flood Kherson region. And that is why people have to evacuate, especially from Bereslav, Belozorka, Alexandrivka and Snigurivka regions. And I mean the selection is already suspicious enough, because these are pretty much exactly the same cities that Ukraine is targeting to liberate first. But I still cannot understand how Ukraine is planning to send water against gravity to Snigurivka. But I guess it is just a different kind of physics which is taught to Russian infiltrators. I mean the one which is totally approved by the state and some other minor and insignificant laws such as gravity can be simply ignored. But ok, because then we have even funnier statement which came to us from another infiltrator Kirill Strimausov, who less than a week ago said that there is no panic in Kherson. And today he is urging the people of Kherson to evacuate as fast as possible. And his video statement that he released earlier today looks as following. Panic? <laughs> Come on, no panic. Uh, what kind of panic you are talking about? Uh, this word doesn't even exist in my vocabulary. Uh, we just need to evacuate because uh, I don't know, just uh, for the safety of people. But no, we, we are definitely not panicking. Just go, just uh, evacuate, evacuate. Uh, but no, uh, we don't have panic here in Kherson. And well, Russians ultimately acknowledged it themselves, that they will have some very difficult decisions to make. And this statement came to us from no one else other than the new commander of Russian forces in Ukraine, Sergei Surovikin. And based on what he says, one of these difficult decisions can be potentially the withdrawal of Russian forces from Kherson. But the main question remains the same, from which part of her son. According to him, one of the most concerning places right now is Kahovka hydroelectric power plant, which matches perfectly with my previous prediction that one of the key cities in Kherson is Bereslav, that is couple kilometers away from this power plant. He then also added that the situation is intense and Ukraine is already breaking through defenses of Russians. And that is why in its future decisions Russia will be guided by the need to save civilian and military lives. Which basically means with high probability that Russians will be retreating from this area first. And as a result, I expect this part of Kherson to be among the first big chunks of land to be liberated. But then we have another quick question to answer. If Russians are retreating, where will they go? Among the first obvious options will be to go down to Crimea and to Zaporozhye region, which are the places where Russians were retreating historically. But from the military perspective this might not make sense, because Ukrainians are still relatively far from these territories at least for now. But if you think about it, they might actually be moved to Donbass or even all the way to Belarus. Because Donbass is pretty much the most important area for Russians and losing it will basically mean losing in this war. And then Belarus is the place where we saw an increase in military activity by Russians recently. And most likely, in case they decide to invade from there, they will go all the way to Kiev. And for this, they need a as many soldiers as possible. You can access all the maps that I was drawing today for free in our Discord. The link will be down below. If you want to support my work, unlock some benefits and get your name featured in the next episode, please consider becoming my channel member. All the other useful links can be found to my right and down below. Thank you so much for your attention, Tavarishi, and see you tomorrow.